Gute Morgen, ich bin dann der Prof von Luxemburgisch with Anne. How are your listening skills? Do you find it hard to follow native speakers in conversations or colleagues at work or to understand the news on the radio? Well, it's not a secret that developing and improving your listening skills is a hard task. It takes time and effort, especially if you are not exposed on a daily basis to the Luxembourgish language. Now, what you can do is to listen. Listen as much as possible. But that's not as easy, not only because of the lack of vocabulary, but because we native speakers use the connected speech, so we connect words when we speak, and because of the famous N rule, where we drop the final N of some words, just to speak um, faster and naturally. But because of this connected speech and N rule, the language flows, sounds smoothly and not choppy. Now, do you want to improve your listening skills? Maybe to be better prepared to take the listening part of the Sprachentest? Then, this lesson is for you. You will learn the five essentials you need to be aware of to improve your listening skills and to take them to the next level. So, passt du prat? Dann los! I will put you immediately to the test. I will say a sentence and you listen to this sentence and try to understand what I'm saying. And if you want, you can write um, what you think you've heard in the comment section below this video. And if you don't understand, so don't worry, at the end of this lesson, you will understand the whole phrase. Prat? Good. A schulo kein Zeit, froh de Mark op en dan om koe hulle verkam. Ich wiederhole, a schulo kein Zeit, froh de Mark op en dan om koe hulle verkam. Now, what is the biggest mistake students make with listening? Well, they focus on single words and to try to translate word by word. But that's not good because words change in context. When you put two words together, the sound often changes. And so if you are listening for individual words, you are not listening for the right thing. Let's uh, have some example. Take these two words. Git dir. Okay, so these are two words, but in spoken Luxembourgish you will hear this. Gidir. Gidir. So it sounds like one word. You have one sound. Gidir. Now here is my first hint to better understand native speakers. In questions, when using the form dear, so the personal pronoun dear, we tend to drop the final T of the verb, like here, gidir, or kent dear, you will not hear kent dear, you will hear ken dear, ken dear, okay, or hut dear, you will not hear in spoken Luxembourgish, hut dear, you will hear hu dear, hu dear. Okay, let's repeat just to practice already now. So the first one is Gidir, Kandir, Hutir. Great. So let's move on. Now in Luxembourgish, uh, we have some weak forms. So there are some words which have a weak form and a strong form. And this is the case for the personal pronouns I have listed here. So for all the personal pronouns except for ush. Now I have now uh, put them here down in the accusative and in the nominative case, but in the lessons notes, which you can find on my blog, I have as well put the weak forms um, in the dative case. So the weak form of do is the. The. For him it's an. An. Hat is it. It. For mir, you will hear ma, ma. Dir is da, da. 
and Z is Z. So in spoken Luxembourgish, especially in questions, we tend to use the weak form of the personal pronouns. Let's take our example, our previous example with git dir. So this is a question. So we won't say git dir, we will say git da. So we'll hear git da, git da, git da. Now, are you aware why it is important to focus on the sound and not on the individual words? Let's have an example with jen, for example, wo as jen. If we don't want to emphasize jen, we would say wo asen, wo asen. Do you hear? Wo asen. Good. Now, there are as well some verbs which have a weak form. For example, gohen, gohen, solle mir gohen. But in spoken Luxembourgish, you will hear this, solle mir gohen, solle mir gohen. So again, we use the weak form of the personal pronoun mir because it's a question. And then gohen, you will hear gohen. Gone. So we drop this e gone, and um, we apply this weak form to all the verbs ending in goen. For example, uh, in oen. For example, zoen. You will not hear zoen. You will hear zoen. Froen. Froen. Soll ich hier froen? Stoen oder verstoen? Okay. And then there is as well another verb which is special. This is the verb machen. So uh, let's take the question, wat solle mir machen? A lot of Luxembourgers, or the, a lot, many Luxembourgers don't say machen, they say man. So you will hear, wat solle mir man? Wat solle mir man? And in addition, uh, as man is ending in n, often we drop the n because of the n rule, and then you will hear this ma. So, for example, instead of hearing macht dir sport, you may hear ma da sport. Ma da sport. Okay? Now I hear you asking, hey Anne, how am I ever going to understand native speakers? Well, now you have done already the first step, being aware and knowing that there are weak forms of uh, pronouns, of verbs, and that we drop the final T of the verbs when followed by dear. You will now be more um, aware of where to put your um, emphasis when listening. And of course, you will have to practice. Now, I'm not encouraging you to speak like this yet. This is a higher level of speaking. Our focus today is on listening and just to recognize and notice these sounds. The more you will listen, the more you will become aware of these sounds, and then you will stop trying to translate word by word or concentrating on individual words. Now you can start improving your listening by following this tip. You should be doing two kinds of listening practice. First, the one which is called intensive listening. This is, so listen to very short audios, so not more than one minute, where you are analyzing specific sounds or aspects of the spoken language, just as we did uh, until now. And then you should as well be doing the extensive listening practice. Listen to longer audios, 20 or even 30 minutes, exposing yourself by following the general idea. Great. Let's move on with an aspect another aspect of the spoken Luxembourgish, and this is our famous N rule. So now, if you don't know what the N rule is, then I highly recommend that you first um, read my lesson on my blog about the N rule, and then that you come back to this lesson. Let's take the verb Hun, which is ending with two N, and the first part of the sentence I have said at the beginning of this lesson. I have said, a shun a low kein Zeit. A shun a low kein Zeit. 
but you didn't hear this, right? You've heard this. A schulo kein Zeit. A schulo kein Zeit. As you can hear, I have dropped the two N of hun because in my sentence it is followed by lo. Yes. There are some words which start with an E and we drop this E. For example, a lo. So in spoken Luxembourgish, you will, uh, of course, you will hear a lo, but we often tend to drop the E and then you will hear lo. But then I will have to apply the annual to hun. So you will hear a schullo kein Zeit. So instead of hearing three words, a sch, hun, a lo, you will hear one sound, a schullo, a schullo. We have another word, schon, which is ending with two N. Um, for example, this sentence, a schu schon apes gears, a schu schon apes gears. But often the two N are dropped because of the annual, and then you will hear this, a schu schon gears, a schu schon gears. You hear? A schu schon gears. Good. Let's as well have another um, example with this. Huiste da schon. Huiste da schon. So what do we have here? We have the worst du, dann schon. So here it is a question. So we tend to use the weak form of the personal pronoun du. So you will hear the, huiste, huiste. And then dann, this small filler particle here, just to make the, the language um, friendlier, more casual, we use this done in questions and often the N is dropped. And then you will hear, who is the da? Who is the da? Who is the da schon apes gebucht? Who is the da schon apes gebucht? Who is the da schon, who is the da schon gebucht? So when we drop the N, you will hear, who is the da schon gebucht? Who is the da schon gebucht? So you will hear this da da, da da, who is the da, who is the da. Let's move on with a third aspect of the spoken Luxembourgish chunks. A chunk is a piece of language. Chunks are words that often go together and where the focus is on the sound and not on the individual words. Now, I will just um, illustrate this here with two chunks, but in the lesson notes on my blog, I have added some more chunks, just that you are aware of some commonly used chunks. Let's take these four words. Et did mir leid. You have four words, et did mir leid, but in spoken Luxembourgish, you will hear a sound. You will hear this, dit mir leid. Dit malit. What do we do here? So first we drop the first word. So et, we just drop it. And then we use the weak form of mir. So you hear ma. Ma in the middle. Dit malit. Listen and repeat after me. Dit malit. Dit malit. Great. Another chunk is andarai, which you certainly have heard as well. Andarai. But we wouldn't say andarai, you would hear andarai, andarai. So the word da sounds da, da, andarai, andarai. Just as if it was one word, andarai, andarai. Okay, great. So these were the chunks. Now we move on to a, a fourth aspect. This is contractions. Now, contrary to English, we don't contract words in Luxembourgish. We just contract some prepositions. So we contract um, a preposition with the masculine or neutral definite article. For example, an. Um, the preposition an plus the definite article dem, which will contract to am. Hein? Voilà. Donc, ich sin am restaurant, zum Beispiel. Another preposition by plus dem will contract to beim. Ich sie beim Doktor. Oh, ha, mat, the famous preposition mat. This is mam, mam. Ich gehe mam pol uh, an der restaurant, zum Beispiel. 
Then we have the preposition no plus the definite article dem in the dative case, which contracts to nom. Nom meaning after the. Now, maybe you have recognized these words in the sentence I said at the beginning of this lesson. I will repeat this sentence. A schule kein Zeit, frode mach op in der nom kur hülle kann. Nom kur after the course or after the lesson, nom quo. And we will finish this lesson with what we call the connected speech. So native speakers talk fast and connect words together. In some audio Luxembourgish um, listening practice samples, they pronounce each word slowly. Okay, so that's good for beginners. But in real life, we don't do that. Instead, we connect words together so that two or more words just sound like one word, as you have learned it or seen it before with chunks, okay? Let's break down the um, sentence I used at the beginning of this lesson. Just listen again, and then I will display it. A schule kein Zeit, frode mach op in der Nomkur helfe kam. A schullo kein Zeit, frode mark, open da nom kur hölfe kam. I have already explained the schullo kein Zeit, but um, I will explain shortly uh, the mark. In English, you just say ask mark, but in Luxembourgish, you have to use the definite article den or the before a male uh, first name, so frode mark. And you have to use the definite article t before female nouns. So if you want to say ask Anne, you will say in Luxembourgish frotan. And more naturally, frotan, frotan. So you will hear this sound, tan, tan. Okay, so my first name is not dan, but if you um, put the definite article, you have this dan, dan. So it can be quite confusing. And then we connect as well the two words op un. Remember the un is the weak form of the pronoun je, and the b of op in spoken Luxembourgish sounds like a p. So you will hear open, open, open da, open da numque, open da, da is the weak form of dear, and so you will hear this, open da, open da. Frode mark open da nom kur hölfe kam. So this is what we call connected speech. Now, un is not only the weak form for the personal pronoun hin, but un is as well the masculine pronoun referring to things or objects. For example, if you hear in a sentence a brill and you don't want to repeat it in the next sentence or in the second part of your sentence, you replace it by un. And in spoken Luxembourgish, it's sometimes very difficult to hear this um, because we connect it to the previous word or verb. Let me put you to the test. I will say two sentences, try to find out where I say this un. Who is to my brill gesin? Nee, a schunde net gesin. Nee, a schunde net gesin. Nee, a schunde net gesin. A schunde Net gesehen. Do you hear? So we connect hun with an erschunen. Net gesehen. So, an der Loh, also Zeit wird Übung. Es so ein zwei Satz. Schreib ob, was du hörst. Schreib den Antwort an die Kommentare. Ja? Satz eight. Hut er da schon Kaffee getrunken? Ich wiederhole. Hut er da schon Kaffee getrunken? Satz zwei. Wisst ihr, ob ihr morgen auf dem Büro könnt? Wisst ihr, ob ihr morgen auf dem Büro könnt? 
So I hope that this lesson was helpful. Don't hesitate to listen again, so to practice. And remember that you can download the full transcript of this lesson with much more examples and with much more um, sentences to, tra to, not to translate, so to listen and to write down, so to improve and practice your listening skills on my blog. So, merci, fiat, no cooking.